Hey by Thomas here, and today we're testing out another blade from Southeast Metals. This is a Casco blade. They say this is one of their best sellers, and I'm very anxious to try out this blade. Uh, we're going to be cutting up a lot of ash and red oak. So again, comparable wood types or anything on the jank to hardness scale. And now we're going to go ahead and test what the set on the blade is. I've got my dial indicator here. I know it's hard to see on the screen, but we have zeroed out our dial indicator. So now let's check the set on, say, two teeth on this side and do two, two teeth on the other side. That was reading uh, just the same, about just a hair under 22 thousandths. So I've got the blade on the actual machine, and it actually is tensioned up to 1,200 PSI. So... Again, showing the most accurate reading if you can. So now, let's go to the other side. Here. 21 thousandths. So, just a hair over 21 thousandths on the other side, or just a hair under 22 thousandths. And then it looks like 21 thousandths on the dot on the bottom side. So, within a thousandths there, I'm very happy with that. Let's go ahead and cut this video. I want you to hear how this blade sings through this. And then we will also take a look at the sawdust as the saw head gets closer. So at the bottom right hand side of your screen, when the saw head gets close to this end of the log, we should be able to see that sawdust flying off in this solid stream. All right, without further ado, let's cut.
got the kids in the background riding on their sleds, so it's a little bit loud. Okay. I don't think the log's frozen, so that's good. Uh, cut quality looks really good. Very happy with that. And it is a really quiet blade. So far, the blade's really quiet. But again, it is a brand new blade. Uh, so we've made our first cut. We've got a 13 by 10 with a little bit of live edge down here. But uh, yeah, this is going to be turned into... I don't know yet. i got to think about what I'm going to turn this into. So I've got all week to kind of figure this out. I think I've got like four or five of these ash logs. And I've got another 20 or so red oak logs. So we'll figure out what we're going to make into this. Uh, this is very beautiful wood. I feel like I'm going to do another wood wall in the house somewhere. I just finished oak wall today. So, all right, without further ado, I'm going to cut away now, but tomorrow we'll come back with a lot of time lapse and everything, and we're going to keep a log count of how many logs do we cut and how many board foot and how many square footage does this blade cut. Okay, folks, this is the next day we're going to be cutting up with this Casco blade. I've got the ash log on there, and because I don't have the entirety of ash logs available, I will be cutting some red oak logs as well. And I think roughly this is about how much she's going to cut. We'll see. There's some big logs in here, some small logs. I'm trying to keep with the same type of log uh, sizes and whatnot as I've done with the ripper blade and with the Kennesaw blade. So the log that was on there last night, it was cutting very well. The blade is very quiet. I do like a quiet blade. It was just ripping through that wood very quiet. Now, one thing I do have to note we've had some really cold temperatures here recently and then it is kind of warmed up a bit these logs might be slightly frozen and i don't really have a good method of telling if they're frozen i did talk to one of my buddies and everything and he said well if you've had lower than 29 degree temperature or 28 degree temperature for like a week or so odds are you might have some frozenness to the logs we've had lows at night in the 20s but highs during the days have been in the 30s. That's for like the past week. Prior to that, we did have some really cold weather. But I think if anything's going to be frozen, the outside of the log will probably be frozen. But the insides are probably still not up to or down to that cold enough temperature. So again, we'll see how the blade performs. And we'll see if we have to throw a handicap on there. But I really don't want to have to because I'm trying to keep this as fair and balanced as possible. And see how this blade cuts.
All right, folks, this is uh, two days later. We did get another little dusting of snow. Uh, the temperature is slightly above freezing, and at nighttime, it really has been kind of hovering there. So the logs should be about the same consistency as they were two days ago. And in fact, I'm probably gonna take off the current log I have on here because I need to cut something that's a little bit quicker. And I'm gonna grab probably another big oak log uh, from over on the off the pile there. Again, we're gonna continue to track the board footage. And get everything set up here. Gotta get my machine warmed up for a few minutes. But the goal is to cut at least one log tonight. Get all the stuff off here and go from there. Very excited about this uh, this blade here. And stay tuned to the end of the video because I've been talking to the owner of the company. The price on this blade, folks, you're not gonna believe what it is. It's the best price I've heard of if you buy two boxes and it's going to be free shipping so it's, it's pretty insane stay tuned for that Okay, folks, we've gone until we can't really get any more light out here. I am very impressed because, folks, I was not holding back. I This log actually is slightly frozen. I was trying not to let that happen, but the log is, in fact, frozen. But we did give her a run for her money. This right here is another 93 board feet. We've got uh, just over 101 inches long, and they're one by fours, and there's a triple stack there. So as you can see, there's there's three stacks there. And if you look down the length of this, there is no variation in that blade whatsoever. It's still cutting as clean as can be. And if I can have Annie move out of the way just a little bit, which she ain't going to, um, the, the cut quality is still really good. Now, I know the, the lighting is very low right now. I still have life on the blade. We're going to go ahead, probably cut another log with it. So again... We're at 403 board foot. We're gonna tack on another 90 some odd board foot there. Yep, I know you can't see it here, but if you look at my nail, well, you can't tell. Next thing I have to do is I'm gonna to to test the set. It still feels sharp to the touch. So, that being said, we are gonna go another day on this blade. Probably another log or two, we'll see. And tomorrow, if I get out here earlier enough, what we're gonna cut is we're gonna cut probably this ash log right here and then we might finish up with that log right there because that log i gotta cut into two by sixes for rafters and then we'll do a total count of all the wood but uh, i'm very impressed uh, again the, the cut quality let's see if we got a little bit better light out here you can see that cut quality is still great but i will tell you this that is a really, really cold piece of wood. So as I was cutting this, that blade was screaming, and I think that's because the log is in fact slightly frozen. <laughs> but again, I just had to slow down my cut a little bit. I'm still seeing a solid stream of sawdust come off this. Let's come back tomorrow, see if we can finish up this video, and then I'll tell you the, the absolute amazing story about how much these blades are gonna cost, because I will be ordering two boxes of these, I guarantee you. All right, stay tuned folks, and yeah, this is gonna be fun. Okay folks, so yesterday when I was cutting, it turns out it was about 30 degrees. It was a little bit colder than I thought it was. And overnight, 
temperature dropped down into the lower 20s and the high for today was only 27 which is is which is what it is currently so there was a question about the logs being frozen yesterday yeah they probably were a little bit frozen but we're going to continue on with this test because nonetheless we want to see what this blade can do i've thrown the ash log on here this log right here we're going to actually slab this up which i think will be a good test because we're cutting the, the wider slabs um, we're going to slab this up because i need some material for live, live edge shelves charcuterie board stuff like that i've also put my dial indicator on here and we are just under 20 thousandths we haven't gotten down to uh 18 thousandths yet that was the determining factor on the uh, last blade that we ran and pretty much on the first blade as well and when you take your thumb to it you can see if I can get it to focus on my thumb. Anyways, it does take off material off my thumb still. So I'm still deeming this blade as sharp and it does have ample set. Uh, that's just kind of the indication that we're going off of. Impressed with the blade thus far, but we'll see how she cuts, cutting through some water stuff here that has knots. That right there will be a true test. Yesterday, she stayed nice and true as we cut up those one by fours out of the red oak. Let's see how she does in this uh, ash log here with some knots. Stay tuned. Okay, folks, I cut up very well, but something I'm finding out, when the log's frozen, so you can see I still have, looks like I have a tooth that's a little bit raised up, but I think that is also dealing with the frozenness. I'm getting like this rip out material going on here. So it's kind of like raised grains, but this board is absolutely freezing. I just had to knock the sawdust off here because it was freezing back to the, the, the board itself. But I'm not seeing waves in the wood. What I am seeing, it does make sense a little bit. I'll show you on here. As I enter into the log, she does do a little dip or raise up or whatever it may be. And that makes sense because as a log dries, it's drying through the ends. And it does feel, I guess, wetter up there. I, I don't know. What do you want to call it? But I think we're going to call this the last log. So not too shabby. But I did see some blade movement on the entrance and the exit. I could cut another log, but I don't think that would be fair. Um, and you can see right here, I've got... And this also could be because of the frozenness of the log. I do have where the teeth were starting to heat up a little bit. So let's see. And it is going through a knot section there. But uh, again, I am not seeing a wave really in the wood or anything. There might be a little bit of high spot right here, just around that one section. But as you see, this is going to be a beautiful board right here. Look at all that curl. That is absolutely gorgeous. And that's what I was going for on this log right here. I want this to be like either live edge shelves or security boards or something. There's too much beautiful grain going on here. And then this 3D effect. So very happy with my decision. Now I did leave these two slabs here thicker. These, this one's about two and a half and this one's about two. But yeah, we're gonna call that the end. A little, little inclusion in there. We're gonna call that the end of this blade. And I will look at the actual set of the blade. And I think that was partially induced by the uh, frozenness of the log, if you will. But again, very happy. Uh, we're going to run the totals. I'll get all the wood out there in a pile. We'll kind of figure out what was the board footage and what was the square footage that this blade ran. And also, I'll get you an idea of what the set is on the blade as well. Because I did not see, like I did last night, a solid stream of sawdust. The sawdust was starting to really uh, float off of there. It just wouldn't come down as a solid stream. So 
this blade is dull. I don't want to run any further uh, and works and, and worry about fatiguing the blade because we still have to sharpen these blades and do a part two of each of these blades that we're running. Okay, folks, I, I didn't tell the truth here. We're actually going to make two more cuts only because I have this piece of ash here. I want to get one more board out of and I have this piece down here. So as I was stacking all the wood onto the forks here to move it over to do the final count, I saw these two pieces here that I still want to get a board out of because I need this for charcuterie stock. So let's go ahead and cut this one real time. I think that'll show you how loud this blade is and you can see the sawdust coming off it as well. And yeah, just because it wouldn't be fair to leave these two sitting here and have to cut them with another one. So I'm only going to trim off a little bit on this one. I won't get the full face of the board. There'll just be a little bit on that side, so it's only going to cut through a little bit. But yeah, you'll see. Still pretty good, but let's check the set on her. Let's go ahead and check the set on that blade. Let's 
see what she reads. Now I zeroed this blade out earlier. We've got tension on her. Yep, we're reading. We're reading right now, right at eighteen thousand. Check the other side. And then the bottom side of the tooth is reading at just under nineteen thousandths. So that's comparable to about the same time we took it off for the ripper s blade so here's the other thing i was making fun of this earlier this came off my track that is a frozen hunk of sawdust and diesel and stuff like that but yeah getting that all off the sawmill prior to the cutting <laughs> all right so let's go ahead and do some calculations figure out the board footage is all right folks after a lot of calculations here, I've come up with the actual square footage and board footage that the singular blade ran. Pretty impressive. All this wood right here, you have three red oak logs and you have three ash logs. So that's a pretty good amount. You have six rather large logs, all of them over eight foot. The longest one was 10 foot and everything. And the logs were quasi frozen. What I mean by quasi frozen, there were some frozen spots in these logs, and I can verify that because this board right here was left out where the sun could get to it. And as you can see, see that little the staining line around it? That must have been when the, the frozen portion thawed out throughout the day as it sat into the sunlight. But again, uh, very impressive with the blade ran. And my numbers here, I did all my calculations on this piece of wood right here. I know it's hard to see because we're running out of light, but it was 600 and 13.38 board foot and then that equates to square footage 476.03 now the reason i have to differentiate between the two i've done some of my other videos you cannot use board footage as the actual measurement to go off of you actually have to know what was the surface area that the blade traveled through and the surface area would equal the square footage now if everything here was cut into one inch dimensional lumber the square footage would equal the board footage. But because I have some inch and a half boards over there, have some two inch stuff over here, we had to actually do some calculations to figure out one between the other. Now, these blades right here, they are coming out of Southeast Metals, out of Georgia and everything. And I talked to the owner because I said, hey, pretty impressive what the blade can do. It, it, it didn't perform as well as the uh, Ripper S, but it's pretty dang close. But... What I think is going to set this blade apart from the other blades is the price. The price that he's going to be offering for 2023 is pretty impressive. Now, this is a deal where you have to buy two boxes of blades, and I'll talk about that here in a second. But if you buy two boxes of blades, the price will be $1 per linear foot of what your blade is. So if you are running a sawmill, say, and this is, I'm going to do easy math. If you're running a sawmill that runs a 12 foot blade, 144 inches that means your blade will cost $12 and then but again you got to buy two boxes and you get free shipping so I asked him how much is in each box and each box will consist of 290 linear feet and that's because that's essentially 50 pounds with all the packaging and that's why they can offer this uh this free shipping because they're doing to the maximum allowed allowable amount and everything but it's 290 feet per box so it's gonna be a rather large order for me if i order these blades two boxes which i'm going to be doing it's going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of like 40 blades from our sawmill and if you figure it up 290 linear feet will be 290 dollars so each box will be 290 dollars but for just under um so was that uh, uh 580 dollars will yield me 40 blades. That's pretty impressive. So that's the best price I've seen around. You do have to buy in bulk, but buying in bulk can save you a whole lot. So folks, I hope this was beneficial and helpful for you, but I'm very impressed uh, with the quality of the blade and how well it ran. Now, when I deem a blade is dull, is kind of, you know, it's, it's dependent upon how I see it. 
And the way I see it is if the set decreases below uh, 18 thousandths, if it no longer scrapes my nail, and if the sawdust is not shooting out in a stream, if it's just floating off. And that's what we saw here on this, uh, this final log as we we're cutting. I was hoping to get one more, but that's really all I could push her. So again, please like subscribe. Check out the folks from Southeast Metals. I'll put their information down below. Pretty awesome. Also coming up, uh, we did have Mr. Joe Main contact us. He wants us to test some of their blades as well. And uh, Mr. Dallas from Southeast Metals is also sending us a blade that will be uh, for frozen logs. So we've got some frozen log blades that we'll be testing here soon, which will be great because some of these logs here were frozen. But again, stay tuned to the channel. We're doing a lot of these blade testings. And then at the very end, we're going to kind of do an analysis of how all the blades performed. And then we also have to relook at these blades after they've been sharpened. So again, hope this is beneficial, helpful to some folks trying to look for uh, blades and everything. If you're buying in bulk, this might be the blade for you. It's a Casco blade from Southeast Metals. All right, folks, we'll see you around. Thanks.